Hi, welcome to another 2D AutoCAD tutorial. We're going to draw a feature from the facade of this high-tech building in London. This is the Financial Times Printworks building by Grimshaw Architects. The structure is fairly simple and coherent. These large columns support a twin beam at the eaves of the roof. The glass facade is suspended from these beams and these elegant trusses hold the glass in position, stopping it basically flapping like a curtain. This is the feature that we'll draw and also a cut through the column. We see the shape of the objects clearer in this view. The truss here bolted quite simply onto the side of the column. It's an elegant shape column. So let's get started. I'm using AutoCAD 2015 for this tutorial. The screen grab software has compressed the uh, the ribbon, the toolbar ribbon at the top here a bit too much. If I re re remove some of these panels then it will expand the properties and the layers panels for, for my use. So if I right click the panel, show panels, take away block, right click again, take away groups, right click again take away utilities, one more should do it, right click again, show panels, clipboard. You would only need to do this if you're working on a small monitor or perhaps a laptop. Okay, We're in the drafting and annotation workspace uh, and this gives us access to the standard drawing tools that we'll need. First thing we need to do is create a layer to hold our construction lines. Trying to build into the drawing a hierarchy of objects and line types. So I'll use the layer properties command. I want to create a new layer. Okay, I'm going to call the layer con which is short for construction. I'm making the layer cyan colored and I want to use the hidden to line type. Now, if the line types aren't available you need to load them. Let's quickly over run through this again. So click on the line types, you load the line type Find the line type you want to use. Let's say we want to use dashed two and OK. Then click on dash two and OK. So layer con is cyan colored and the line type will be dashed two. We want to make that the current layer. If we use this icon, the tick moves down onto layer con, meaning it's now the current layer. Anything I draw from now on should be cyan colored and show up as a dashed line. I'll close the dialog box and I'm just going to start with a simple line. Okay, I get the line command. I could also type in L at the command prompt. I'm just going to start my line at this position and I want the line to go to the right but it must be horizontal so I'll put on the ortho restriction. This makes sure the line goes horizontally or vertically. I can set my direction and then tell it how far I want to draw the line or I could be more specific and type in a 
relative coordinate. So if I add the at symbol, I'm going to go 2000 millimeters at an angle of zero. Zero direction is to the right. Press enter and the line zips across. Okay, I'm holding the middle mouse button and you can see, I can see the whole of the line. If you couldn't see the whole of the line, then double click your middle mouse button and that will do what's called a zoom extends. Okay, now the line is filling, exactly filling the screen. If you roll the mouse backwards, roll the wheel on your mouse backwards, it zooms back in steps. Okay, let's place the line, let's place ourselves in relation to the line, something like this. Okay, now I can't see the dashes on that line, they should be showing up as dashes. This means the line type scale isn't set correctly. So to change that, it's a difficult command to find from the menus, better to type it in. So I try LTS, short for line type scale. As you type commands, you can see that the, the computer tries to preempt which command you might be needing. So it starts to populate this little list depending on the letters that you choose. So the line type scale command has appeared here. And what I need to do is to increase the dashes so I can see them. So I put in a higher number. So let's see what 50 looks like. Much too big, really. Press the enter key and press the return key on your keyboard and you can use the command again. Let's try a smaller number. Let's maybe go for 10. It's still probably a bit too big. Press enter again and let's go with 5. Okay, I can see the dashes now. They're fairly clear. All right, what I'd like to do now is bring a line down from each end of this line. So I want the line command again, either pick it or type L and return. Now I want to draw exactly from the end point here. So what I need to use now are called object snaps. And these are activated using this button here. So we can activate the object snaps, but I don't know which ones I've got available. So use the small arrow next to the icon, and it's showing me that at the moment three, sorry, five object snaps are active. The tick means they're active. If you want a bit more control, use the object snap settings button at the bottom, and this gives you it in a a more tabular form with all the object snaps that are available. So we're placing a tick in endpoint, midpoint, center, intersection and perpendicular should be enough for this job. Click OK. Now I'm still inside the line command. I haven't actually finished it yet. OK, move close to the line and you can see the object snaps start to appear. Depending on where my cursor is, depends which one shows up first. Tapping the tab key on your keyboard cycles through the object snaps. Okay, so I'm not moving the mouse, I'm just tapping the tab key with a half a second gap in between. That's another way of locating the object snap you want. So this time we'll draw the line in a more simple manner. We choose its start point, so it's left click to select the end point. Drag to determine your direction and then say how far you want to go. So let's go down 500. Press enter to stop the command. Press enter to bring back the command. Your spacebar acts as an enter key when you're using AutoCAD. 
find the other end of the line, drag downwards. At this end, I'm going to draw down 600. Press enter to stop the command. OK. So these are our basic setting out lines. What I want to do now though is draw lines on a different layer. So I need to create that new layer. So go to your layer properties, create a new layer, and this one is going to be the column. I'll write its full name just in case we get things muddled up with con and col. This layer is going to be magenta colored, a strong pink color. This is intentional so that when the, the drawing prints out these objects will appear stronger. They'll, they're more, more important lines than the construction lines. So I click on magenta and OK. I don't want them to be dashed lines so I change the line type back to continuous and OK. Remember to make the layer current before you finish here. Close the dialog box. OK, we'll start off with a circle. The circle command shortens to the letter C or we've got the circle command up here. Using the object snaps wherever possible for greater accuracy. Select the end point and then all we need to do is drag. The dragging isn't really necessary. Down here it's waiting for me to input the radius. If I type in 250 and return, sets the radius of the circle. I don't want the full circle here, I just want half of it. So it's pretty difficult breaking a circle up. It's much easier if you have a line that you then slice the circle in half with. So let's create a line. L, return, pick a point, drag to the side, make it long enough so that it will be able to chop the circle in half. Press enter to finish the command. The line can't cut the circle yet, it's only passing through the circumference in one point. We need to extend it further across. Click on the line, I haven't got any commands active at the moment, click on the line, Take click on the grip, the blue squares are called grips, and drag the line so that it cuts through the other side of the circle. Okay, it doesn't have to look tidy, it's just as long as the line is big enough to cut through the circle. Now press escape to disable the grips. OK, we'll introduce another new command now called trim. And this is for chopping objects into bits. Trim's sitting here as an icon or I can type in TR and return. It's taking the first two letters of the command instead of having to type the whole thing. The command prompt is useful. Its role is to tell you what to do next. That's what the prompt means. So down here it's saying select the cutting edges. I would say pick the knife. So this is the knife that's going to cut off the bottom of the circle. So you pick on the horizontal line. I don't want to pick any more knives, so I press the enter key. And now the command prompt is saying, pick the objects we want to cut. Select the object to trim. So we're going to choose the bottom of the circle. AutoCAD 2015's made things a bit niftier here. We can see that the icon next to the cursor 
has changed to a little x, meaning that part of the circle will be deleted. So it's the bottom half of the circle we want to get rid of. Then press escape to fully stop the command. Okay, this line is going to be used later on, so we'll keep it for now. But we do need to see a bit more of this area of the drawing. So hold your middle mouse button and move the column into the middle of the view. Okay. Now this, the sides of the column are basically going to spring from this point at each side. So draw yourself two lines. They don't have to be any length in particular. Okay. Press return twice so that you can use the command again. Okay, now the column tapers. It tapers from these points to a rounded end. So what we need to do is rotate these inwards and the angle for that is 7 degrees. So that's a new command. We've got the rotate command here or I could type in RO and return. Okay, it's asking me to rotate the objects. I need to do this one at a time. This one is going to rotate to the right, this line is going to rotate to the left. Pick the line and press return. So you've picked the object that's going to rotate. Now the command prompt is asking me to specify a base point. What do I want to rotate around? I want to choose the top end of the line. So I pick this point and then it's asking me to specify an angle and we want to go 7 degrees. A positive number rotates in an anti-clockwise direction. So 7 and return return to bring back the command. We're rotating this line now. Press return. The base point is the top end of the line using your object snaps every time. And this time the angle is minus 7. Starting to shape up. Now we'll do something fairly clever here what we'll do is we'll force these two lines to join each other using a curve. So the, to join two lines we use the fillet command. But to join it with a curve we specify a radius for the, for the join. So the fillet command isn't an obvious one here. Okay, It may be down here. I don't tend to use the uh, the icons very often, so I'm just going to type in F for fillet. It's probably staring me right in the face, but I can't remember what it looks like. So F, return. Okay, you'll notice here there's no radius. Without a radius, these two lines would join at a point. If they were parallel, it would actually join them with a curve automatically. Okay, but I need to specify a new radius, so I can use one of the sub-options of the command. So if I click on this blue letter R, I can then enter the radius I need, which is 125 millimeters. Press enter, and now it's asking me to pick the two lines and they will join. Pick first line, AutoCAD is jumping ahead and showing me the result even before I pick the second line which is looking fine. And we have our column shape. Quite an elegant kind of keyhole type shape. Right, we're going to move on now on to the arm of the truss. But that's been 20 minutes so I think we'll stop this video just now and do the arm of the truss in part 2.